Coming to you from sunny California and the Great White North. Get ready. We are breaking down the obstacles on the Armchair Ninja Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Armchair Ninja Podcast. It is Saturday, April 21st, 2018. My name is Rich, and joining me once again is Bajan. How are you making it out? I'm good, man. Second time's a charm. <laughs> Let's hope this works. <laughs> we had a rough start. We had a bit recorded, and we are re-recording, but that's okay. We're good to go. Yeah. Ugh. There's nothing worse, everyone, than recording half of a podcast, and then your computer crashing, and you losing everything. You just want to scream. <laughs> there is one thing that's worse, and that is when it's doing it when we have a guest. But we don't have a guest today, Ooh, so yeah. that's much better. Good point, Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we're here to talk about Ninja vs. Ninja Episode 8, which was absolutely fantastic. It was great stuff, man. A lot of storylines going on here. We have both uh, the storyline of, like, the old versus the new, like the experienced older veterans versus, like, the young bloods, right? And then we also have kind of the storyline of, and, and I kind of hate to say it, I'm not, I really don't want to rag on her, but, like, Kind of like your team is only as strong as your weakest, you know, teammate. And really that that played a major factor in this whole episode. So just a lot of things going on. Yeah, Cassie Craig, unfortunately, we will call her, call her right off the bat. Uh, Cassie did not have a great episode. Very strong ninja. I feel like she was struggling to just keep up with the pace. I, th- I feel like she could do the course, but just trying to go at that speed. And I think endurance may have played mm-hmm. a part later on as well. Uh, but we'll get into all the details later. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, overall, fantastic episode. Absolutely loved it. Beginning to end. Yeah, it was great. Dude, and my, yeah, it was and my pick, Fr- <laughs> Frostbite, was actually uh, did really well. I was really impressed. Oh, yeah. Props to you, bro. You get a ding for that. Good on you, because I, I thought you were crazy not choosing, um, what do you call it, Phoenix Force. Yeah, I mean, in, in the end, they did win. But, yeah, uh, I'm like, wait, was, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Phoenix Force It wasn't won, a blowout. But... It, wasn't a, it was, wasn't a complete blowout, that's for sure. Yeah, and and going into the season, we had to choose three picks, and the two picks I was having a tough time with were Phoenix Force or Team TNT, and I ultimately chose Team TNT because they're old school pedigree, but, you know, um, I, I don't mind the fact that Team TNT didn't win this episode. They still look strong, and really, we had four very strong teams, and frostbite really has nothing to be ashamed of nor think tank i mean this was action-packed and good on phoenix force they struggled but they earned their victory wholeheartedly well now that we got the ending out of the way let's talk about (laughs) (laughs) let's talk about uh the actual move so let's get into a little bit of what do you think of the move to monday nights how is that working for you uh, you know, I, I was kind of, uh, I, I was curious going into this because I was like, what's going on? Why are they moving it? And, you know, I was looking at the ratings because I'm kind of like a ratings nerd. Last season, which was their first season on USA Network, you know, they were making uh, or earning about a million viewers per episode in terms of ratings, which is pretty dang good, especially for USA Network, you know, a cable television channel. It was on... Tuesday nights, which is a pretty good uh, spot because it's got a pretty good lead in. Now, they moved it this this season to Thursday nights at 9 p.m., where they're pretty much the primetime show. No longer do they have a strong lead in. They are the lead in, so to speak, which is asking a lot for for a show in its sophomore year. But it also showed that, you know, USA Network was really confident in them. Unfortunately, looking at the ratings, they were hitting about 0.6 0.6 million viewers an episode and it was actually on the decline um so which actually isn't very uncommon i mean most shows are going to be on the decline in ratings anyways but they lost a good third of their audience which you know can raise some eyebrows and thursday nights just is not a good spot for them so the good thing is usa network readjusted and put them on monday nights with the strongest lead in there is on their network and and honestly all of cable television probably well i can't say cable television because there's walking dead and stuff now (laughs) (laughs) but um you know for usa network and, and a lot of those like secondary networks this is pretty dang strong which is monday night raw 
whether you watch wrestling or not, everybody's heard of Monday Night Raw. It is huge. It is a juggernaut. It consecutively is the number one show on cable television during its ne- during its um, time slot. And it is the strongest lead in you can do. USA Network has a history of putting their um, beginning shows like their premieres after Monday Night Raw as a lead in so they can have a giant jumping platform, get the get the, all the views and people in um, familiar with the show. And then they transition to their own time spots, maybe on Tuesday nights or Wednesday nights. So. It's kind of, I've, I see this this time change kind of like a rebuilding where it's like, OK, we gave it a try. But, you know, people are so new to Ninja versus Ninja, all things like that. I mean, it, it's a different name and, and just a bunch of things happening. So ultimately, I think this is good. It shows that USA Network really still is driving this home and they're very confident in Ninja versus Ninja. And they can they're kind of just re, rebuilding it and getting a bigger audience for it. Familiar with the show. Yeah, and there's there's a lot of crossover between wrestling fans and ninja fans. Uh, it's Huge. kind of an ongoing thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I mean, got personalities, you know, all that stuff. And yeah, I think the wrestling audience works in tandem with Ninja vs. Ninja and this type, especially. So I think this is perfect, perfect pairing. All right, so let's get into the episode itself. We had Phoenix Force against Think Tank what a matchup that was i was not sure about michael torres at first i knew the name really I I, yeah what? i mean i'm no doubt it now <laughs> i've seen it but i was like michael torres it was familiar but not quite as familiar as it should have been oh, and man. uh yeah he definitely proved himself against one of our favorite in the team ninja warrior segment matt wilder uh michael torres is a phenomenon yeah, Michael Torres is amazing. He's always been very fast on American Ninja Warrior. He, if you guys don't remember, he was he kind of got overshadowed because he was in the same time as Najee Richardson and a lot of the other young guns coming and Daniel Gill, you know. But he was another one of the other guys from maybe two seasons ago where he did phenomenal on American Ninja Warrior, the main show. And his main claim was he was very fast and definitely shows on this. Keep an eye out for Michael Torres. I can see him being one of those ninjas that is always going to make it to the finals. Very, very good. Maybe he doesn't have the brimming personality that the other ones do. I'm not saying he doesn't or he does. I just don't know yet because it, it shows like they aren't showing him as much as the others like Naji and stuff. But, you know, he's right up there in terms of talent with them. So keep an eye out for him. He, he just might be, I don't know, like a Brett Sims, you know, always in the background, <laughs> but always there. Yeah, um, it's it's hard to shine on a team with Najee. Like, Najee is so overpoweringly charismatic and amazing on the course that, like, no one's going to outshine him. So we'll nope. see if Michael Torres can find his own place uh, going forward. But, uh, yeah, he definitely impressed. He was it was really, really good. So what do you think about the fact that, you know, Michael Torres beat Matt Wilder? Matt Wilder has been, like, this crazy phenom for the p- previous seasons of Team Ninja Warrior. As soon as he started getting ahead of him, I was like, this is incre- like crazy. I I thought for sure Matt was going to just destroy him, to be honest, because Matt is Whoa. just shown. I really did. Well, because I didn't appreciate it until I saw him start moving. And he got like a big lead and was like, okay, this wasn't even close, right? Michael was pulling ahead. He, Matt closed the gap on the spin cycle, and they were dead even by the warp wall. But, that, but Michael had like, had opened up a good lead <laughs> through the first half of the course. And it's like, what is going on this episode? Yeah, it was pretty awesome, though, in the pole grasper. They were both going forward, and Michael Torres basically, like, kind of just jumps almost on Matt Wilder's head. Like, he's just sitting on Matt Wilder's shoulder or something uh, and, and <laughs> holding on to those things and just going over the guy. It was pretty awesome. And I think this is a this matchup in particular was kind of a thing of – the both teams were pretty equal in terms of skill. Like, of course, Think Tank had more experience and everything, but at a certain point, everybody evens out when it comes to skill level in terms of doing the more rudimentary obstacles. And yet, uh, it seems like Phoenix Force just had a little bit more athleticism. I mean, they are younger and everything, but just a little bit more athleticism being brought into those obstacles. They had a more pep in their steps, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, really... 
anchored down by <laughs> Michael. And I, it's going to be hard to talk about this episode without seeming like we're being mean. It really is because Cassie. No, man. I, I thought she. <laughs> I'm looking at my notes here. I thought she did well early on. And I'm like, like she fell nope. on the first round, too. Yeah. Oh, geez. She, not... she just had a rough night, you know. And, yeah. you know, who are we? Like, it's, it's one of those things where it's like who knows if I can even do half the stuff that they're doing. Right. But as a viewer, and we have to be critical, it just comparative to everybody else, Cassie Craig for better or for worse, just didn't bring it tonight. And I don't fault her because it could be many things going on. And we just don't know. She could be injured going into this. She could have nerves going into this, you know, her story, like her story and vignette right now was more, she's about her music career right now. So maybe she just didn't get enough training in who knows. All I do know is it was a mixture of, you know, a very tough obstacle for her body size where it was very clear. She was having a tough time doing the transitions of the TikTok. And mixed with, you know, once you get down on yourself, it's really hard to, you know, continue going on. It feeds into that mental aspect more and more and more. It's the whole storyline that we always say about rallying. This is almost like the reverse of it, right? Yeah, we've had a couple of incidents. Uh, The one that comes to mind this season we had with one of the best, you know, ninjas we know, Carson Williams had two nasty Mm. falls on his runs. I mean, like you said, once you get into your head, it can be really hard to kind of regroup at that point. Yeah. And last season, didn't Alyssa Beard have some some troubles? Like, you know, it could happen to anybody. Yeah, it definitely can. But yeah, so the the first matchup, they end up going two and one. Uh, It wasn't a clean sweep because Cassie had fallen. Um, Najee did end up beating Noah. Uh, I did think for a second he, it might be over because Najee fell on the floating tiles, but he did bring it home. And Noah was struggling a bit on the poles. Najee was just pushing him to a pace that he couldn't quite keep up. I mean, he did get to the warp wall to his credit, you know, right on his heels. But uh, yeah, in the end, it just it just didn't happen. And he's down mm-hmm. doing the bowing to him like, like dude, like <laughs> I have to respect the speed that Najee brings to the course. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Um, Najee got his feet wet, and he still got up the warped wall in one single stride. Like, that's that's impressive. Uh, so when it went into the relay, Cassie ended up falling on the dismount from the TikTok. Uh, oh, but they boy. still they still managed to close that gap, even with the five seconds. Michael and Najee were able to make up the difference. So like, that's key. Insane. That, is, that is prime. And the fact that pretty much you, you have to view it as two two ninjas versus three ninjas with a five second deficit, right? That that's a big that's a big task. And we've seen a lot of ninjas go for broke in the these sim, similar situations and fail spectacularly. But both Michael and Najee were able to make up that ground and staying calm. Like they were fast, but they, they never seemed like they were flailing around. Right. In particular, I have to really think the MVP in making up the time and everything was Michael Torres. Yeah. That guy made up major ground and I don't know, like low key dude was beast moding this episode and keep an eye out for him. In many ways, he was the VIP for his team. Najee was doing Najee. He was phenomenal. But Michael Torres, when you really look at this episode, he made up a lot of the deficits. Well, we've seen our complaints in past seasons was that a strong captain could carry the team. Like we saw it happen again and again. And that was the one thing we didn't like. Now we see that two people can do it effectively. This, you know, being fair, that's basically what happened this episode. I'm kind of okay with that. That's that's way better than one, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it's a big ask from the other two, but if they're able to do it, I still think that's a team victory. Yeah, old, old format wise, we would be looking at Travis Rosen's TNT probably versus Phoenix Force, and if it was the same structure, I mean, who knows? The the older format of you know Team Ninja Warrior. It's it plays a lot more heavily towards the upper body portion in the later half. So now this is a lot more of a lower base agility based course, like endurance and everything's being playing a part. Not really upper body heavy where it's like, oh, yeah, I do upper body obstacles all the time. I'm just going to beat everybody at that. This really lends itself more towards the younger athletic teams. 
So keep an eye out for that. I think when we look back, and I think the final matchup in the prelims is next week, we, we need to take a look at what teams made it onto the finals and what's going on with them. And I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of younger teams. That would make sense. Yeah, because endurance definitely has played a big part with with all these relays and the multiple races and everything that they have to do yeah we've i i think we've it's fair to say we've seen that what do we think of this second match up here team tnt versus frostbite your pick versus mine how did you think it was gonna go down <laughs> probably not like it did uh, i don't know man honestly ever since i saw the new format of the show i was thinking team tnt is gonna have a tough time to be honest with you not necessarily in the the first match which we saw right here but Say TM TNT beats Frostbite, right? And they go on to the finals. I gotta say, I don't give them much of a chance against Phoenix Force. They're they're very good, very talented, but man, you're asking a lot for Brett Sims to go up against Michael Torres in terms of like, you know, not stopping at at all and going all out tilt. They're good in short bursts. I don't know at their age. And I, I hate using age as an excuse, but I, I just don't know. <laughs> that's asking a lot of doing that full course, you know, nonstop. So in many ways, for, as a viewer, I'm, I'm kind of happy that Frostbite beat them and the fact that we got two very young Spry teams going into the finals. That said, this matchup is what you're really asking me. And yeah, I don't know, man. It it kind of went the way I thought, but at the same time, the way I was, I was hoping it wouldn't go. If that makes sense. Yeah, I really am surprised it was a clean sweep. I thought Travis would would beat Nick. That was one that shocked me. Yeah, but that even that win though was something. That was just what do you even call that? Travis just missed it by a couple of inches, or basically missed missed the wall. Like who would have saw that going? He had him beat and missed the wall, and Nick was able to to pull it off from that, behind. That sucks, man. That's painful. Like <laughs> it's right there, and really that was a cool matchup because. They changed the lead about two or three times. So it was back and forth, back and forth. And it's a shorter course, too, so it's even crazier. But yet, in the end, it was clear Travis Rosen had it, but he just fell at the last moment. And I don't know. It's a freak thing. It sucks. It's, it's, I, I don't know. I can't blame age or anything. It's just one of those things that happen. And Nick Hansen, like, completely won my heart this episode. Like, he was fantastic. His story, the backstory they gave for him. Mm-hmm. Going to Washington, his you know his attitude and his skill on the course. I really, really dug him this not, episode. Not just him, man. The entire team. Zanique's awesome, but who's the Boy Scout? I, I keep forgetting his name. I yeah, just call him. The they Boy didn't Scout. even mention the Boy Scout thing. I think he's trying to put that behind him. It's uh, I'm Jackson sure really Meyer. Is. Jo- <laughs> Jackson Meyer. Like honestly, I really liked him this episode. I didn't, you know, I, it was cute being the Boy Scout, but it was kind of like I'm seeing a dude dressed as like a kid. <laughs> I don't yeah. even know it's fair, but you know what I mean, guys. I think you it know, was a good call to get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, this, him introducing who he is now and showing more about his personality, like this dude's brimming with personality. He's great. I was enjoying it. Him making fun of like the fact that he doesn't train and him all getting like, of course, it's all hammed up and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But it was funny. It was genuinely funny. I enjoyed it. So good on him. He has a the, you you either have it or you don't when it comes to a knack of comedy. Right. Sometimes it could be like painful and cringy. I really didn't find it cringy. He, he had a good knack for comedy. So that could be a shit. And I don't know. It was enjoyable. Overall, the entire team of Frostbite. Brimming a personality, I freaking love them. Maybe they can be like the new uh, Golden Hearts or whatever, you know? Obviously, it's a different type of charisma, but they've got it in spades. Yeah, and a quick shout out to Emily Durham for stepping over Janique on the floating Dude. tiles to make it across. Like, I thought she was going to step on her head. She, like, didn't slow down. Like, I'm coming through, boy. You better move. That was boss status, bro. Like, she just, like, bounced and went right over her. And that's Zanique, man. Like, you look at Zanique just in terms of, like, <laughs> bodybuilding and everything. Zanique is just, like, muscle. And, like, she's like a tank, man. And she's, and little Ellie Durham's like, yeah, I'm gonna just step right over you and move on. Like, that was dope. Yeah, if she had made that wall, like, that would have been a pretty big upset. But, uh, unfortunately, missed and uh, gave up the win. And before we move on, Brett Sims with a beard. Yay or nay? Oh, yay. I mean, it, it's I don't know. It's far better than his old look, in my opinion. <laughs> he, I like it. He aged himself like 10 years. As a bald man with a beard, I give thumbs up. So that led us to the final after a clean sweep. 
a definitely unexpected clean sweep of Team TNT. We had the finals, Phoenix Force and Frostbite. And the only thing that I could think was we didn't fast forward any runs. We haven't given out the uh, the Mitsubishi Drive of the Night or whatever. Like, this is going to relay. All right, let's see what happens. This should be good. I mean, wow. You, I know you think of that stuff. I still, to this day, don't think of the Palm <laughs> or the like the Run of the Night or any of that. I'm so glad I don't. <laughs> I know. I wish I could. I wish I didn't. I obsess over it way too much. How did you think it was going down? You, you, you were pretty solid on Phoenix. I'm taking. I mean, yeah, but I didn't think it would be a clean, like, easier at all. These two teams look very similar in terms of skill sets. Like, Phoenix Force is a little bit younger. Like, I would probably say they're faster, right? But in terms of uh, Frostbite, like, those two guys are very powerful. And overall, I felt like it would really, really come down to the women. Those were (laughs) the two X factors right here. And I just didn't know because Zanique's very new to the sport. She's very, very talented, got a perfect body type for the show, but she's very new. I just don't know if she has any experience on these obstacles, right? And when it comes to Cassie Craig, I mean, she was faltering earlier. I didn't know if she would make up for for those falls or not. So those were the X factors going in for me. I felt like the guys were fairly even. I give a slight edge to Phoenix Force, but that's really it. My exact thoughts, I'll, I'll cop to it, was the way Cassie's going, it's just a matter of whether... Like, I was almost positive that Michael and Najee were going to win their races and Cassie would lose hers. So then it was going to come down to the relay and it's like, can they make up the five seconds? And I was trying to figure out whether they'd be able to make up the five seconds or not. And then the first relay happens and that, that was like one of the best endings imaginable. Najee falling was so unexpected. That was crazy. But on top of that, like seeming to have injured himself and is like, oh, now I really don't know how this final relay is going to go. I mean, before we even talk about that, we got to like. Oh, yeah, I skipped over like everything to get right to the end. Uh, it's whatever. But I'm just saying like Najee was absolutely phenomenal in the second portion of this course. It, it just shows how strong this guy is in particular. I mean, keep an eye out for him on stage two and three on American Ninja Warrior. I mean, this guy's looking very strong. Like, I don't know, man. Najee and Daniel Gill look stronger and stronger every year in terms of the later portions of the Vegas courses. They get out there. I think they are going to be doing some major damage. But in in terms of the show, dude was phenomenal, very fast. Like, he was tired, but never too tired. So he's got very good, like, endurance, you know? And... Uh, I mean, it, it's one of those things where it really adds to the story, the fact that he can persevere through even um, really bad pains. And I don't know, have you ever had like really major cramps, Rich? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a fat guy. I get them like constantly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> like, just wake up the wrong way and it's like, ah, no, 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 no. Like, Yeah, I cannot imagine trying to do something athletic with, you know, leg cramps. It just must be awful. Yeah, that's what, because, like, you know, I run marathons and stuff, and, like, you know, those types of cramps, those are extremely painful, but very dangerous at the same time. That's what I was worried about. You, they're cramping up for a reason. These muscles are at the brim, and when they cramp up in particular, they they tend to be strained and inflamed. So you just put too much pressure in one way, you can rip your muscle, like, completely off the bone. And I was I was worried about the guy, but... It looked like he was very smart, kept stretching it out, which must have been so painful to do, right? <laughs> like, just forcing yourself to stretch out a cramp. But but he persevered, and um, I, I don't know. I, I think when you look back at this episode, you're really going to be thinking about uh, Najee Richardson. Because as you said, he just takes over everything, the spotlight. But man, guy had a story. Yeah, I thought he injured himself. At the end, when he collapsed, I thought, oh no, he like did too much. He just... Basically, th- he just refused to give up and injured himself in the process. But thankfully, it looks like it was still just cramps in the end. Mm-hmm. Like, guys, he, he, like to win the entire thing, he literally like, how do you describe this? He's in pain. He flew. He's basically he on- actually, you know, 
yeah, lived he up to his name. Flies. He lived up to the image. He actually just decided to fly up through the zigzag climb. Yeah, and he basically jumps on one leg because a cr- really bad cramped leg. He basically can't put any pressure on like landing on it. So he just like jumps to the platform and then he just collapses and starts writhing in pain. I mean, that was crazy. And I don't know. The, it's just I hate seeing people in pain, of course, but in terms of a viewer, it was invigorating. And even more so, I'm just happy the fact that he isn't hurt and isn't injured, you know. So he will go on to the finals, you know, relatively healthy. Overall, I got to say, this was a great matchup. I mean, Frostbite really gave them a run for their money. In particular, Zanik. Zanik on Frostbite really like even if cassie craig didn't fall i think zanique would have really done some damage in terms of making a big lead yeah she was just phenomenal and, and in particular for her first time on this type of show i mean i'm really impressed by her and uh yeah both other guys you know like <laughs> they were they were great you know you don't really think about them in terms of speed especially the uh i forgot his name already again but you know the boy scout <laughs> you know i don't yeah, I don't I don't really think about him as a fast guy, but he definitely held up his end of the bargain. Yeah, he's got a Grant McCartney vibe between the uh, the dancing, the the personality, the size of him and the speed. Yeah, what for is that he size. like? Did he see he was like six feet, like 190 pounds or something like that? Something That's like a that, yeah. big dude. Big dude. Very comparable like, to Grant McCartney, actually. Yeah, like he's only an inch taller than me, but he's 40 pounds heavier than me. OK, <laughs> now I'm not saying I am like, you know, most in shape person, but, you know, I'm. I'm pretty in shape dude is just like i'm not call- he's not fat i'm not saying that but the dude's probably got like holding on a lot of muscle and extra weight that he doesn't necessarily need for the sport but maybe he's just there because he's a big dude genetically i don't know but um yeah to have that kind of size on this in particular not even mary ninja warrior but ninja versus ninja here good on that guy yeah i was a little worried about his stamina but he held up really well yeah I want to see that guy doing that in his mid thirties, though. <laughs> Sorry, <girl. laughs> Tackle it while, while you're young, bro. Tackle it while you're young. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we've got seven. Of, no, so we've got eight of the teams now decided, with one matchup left to go in the the first rounds. Oh, wait, how does that work? What? So they're gonna have nine going into the finals well that's the thing so i'm a little confused and thank you to maximus on twitter for calling this out so he he posted a picture of the sweet 16 they had flashed it up on the screen i think briefly showing like the brackets so there's nine episodes Mm -hmm. and then we're gonna have it's somehow to fill out the other seven teams but we don't know how yet so the sweet 16 is the quarter so that doesn't make sense not really. Wait, so, so, so all these teams more fought episode. so hard to get to the spot, and then they're basically almost doubling the the finals. Is that what we're he- what I'm hearing? It seems like it. Yeah. I mean, where else they have seven uh. more spots in their Sweet Sixteen? So, yes. And not only that, they seem to have matched up winners, right? Like you would think, if you're going to bring in, you know, like the top seven teams that got knocked out, they should be facing some of the losers. Yeah. Some yeah, like facing each other to win to win the opportunity to go you know to carry on almost like a double elimination type thing i don't know i don't know it'll get sorted out here um but we do have one more episode to go here do you ready to hear the matchups and we we already know oh, our i'm pick. ready bro i am so ready <laughs> right when you hear the teams you're like oh yeah that, i know exactly who my pick is we have superhero squad with jamie ron rachel goldstein and sean darling hammond Wisco Warriors with Drew Knopp, Andrew Philibeck, and Sarah Heeson. The Tryhards with Sean Bryan, Rebecca Bonilla, and Adam Rail. And Hazard Brigade with Mike Bernardo, Gray Sims, and Michael Needham. These are so bad named. Like, yeah, oh, they're terrible the, names. The names. Oh, like Superhero Squad's the only one that. Oh my gosh, people. Like, work on their your names. <laughs> So we both picked tryhards to win the whole thing. Oh, so, easily, so, easily, right? Yeah. Like it's not even it's well, not even easily because this is a thing in terms of pound for, for pound, like teams in one episode. This is the most packed episode. And I think this is why they're keeping it for the end. I have a feeling we're going to see some fireworks. We might even see some surprises, but this is going to be 
a very, very strong episode. We have Superhero Squad, who, if they weren't on this episode, they would have been my third pick. They are so strong. In particular, Jamie Ron is so fast. We've seen him forever, so you kind of get lax. So like, oh, that's just Jamie Ron. That's Captain NBC. But if you guys look at him in the past two years, Guy has stepped up his game so much. He is like really fell like falling into his own he owns a gym now and is getting all that training in he's very very technical and very fast so keep an eye out for jamie ron i think he's going to do some very big damage in particular him matched with sean darling hammond and rachel goldstein are you kidding me that is a team of like just beasts so they can easily take this episode um, though that's the team that gives me pause for caution when they're up against the tryhards, but you have to, like, well, first of all, how do you feel about Super Hero Squad or any of the other teams other than tryhards? I like the teams. I, I think they would do phenomenal. I just really can't see anyone beating the tryhards. I do have to say though, after watching this episode, we just watched if any of them, particularly Rebecca, cause I, I think Adam and Sean, I'm a little more confident in Rebecca is great we've seen her do really well but if she has an off night that could be difficult because you probably aren't going to pick up five seconds against jamie ron and sean darling hammond that's a good point i mean they're going to be very close and rachel goldstein is phenomenal i met her in person she's so talented and very calm under pressure so you know bonilla is going to have a tough task ahead of her competing against Rachel Goldstein if they both if both teams make it to the to the relay not even to mention you know up against one-on-one but when you look at Adam Rail and Sean Bryan you can't not pick that team Sean Bryan we've seen over the past two years has been so very strong not only on Mega Ninja Warrior show, like uh, showing his technical side and his strength but also, he competed on Team Ninja Warrior and was one of the surprise like um, replacements, right? He, I think he replaced one of the teams and was doing almost better than the pe- person he was replacing. Yeah. So the guy was just so fast. So we know he's got the speed and everything else. And Adam Rail, I mean, the dude's the champion of everything involving speed courses. So we, you know, there's literally, in my opinion, nobody in the world better than him. The only person that comes close would be Joe Morosky. And he's not even on this season. So Adam Rail is on an island of his own in terms of talent, in particular for Ninja versus Ninja. So you, you just can't not pick their team. They're my top pick to win the entire season for a reason. Makes sense. You said it all. Thank you, everyone, so much for sticking with us on this move between the different podcast feeds with Underdog Sports. Uh, We are back, and we are here to stay. No more switches around. We are good to go from here on out. And if you'd like to reach out to us, you can reach me as rich at ninjapodcast.com. I am at ninjapodcast on both Instagram and Twitter. And Bijan, how can they reach you? Hit me up at Twitter and Instagram at Bijan151. That is B-I- jan 151 shout out to underdog and everybody else you know um no hard feelings or anything we just wanted to try some things out before the main season and you know some things just don't work out we had different thoughts about stuff so back to our old channel where we're doing things our way and loving it thank you all so much for listening and i hope you have a fantastic week peace and love y'all